Okay, so today we're going to draw up a table of Dirichlet characters, modulo 16. Now, first of all, we need to work out what a Dirichlet character is. So, the Dirichlet character is noted with the symbol chi, Greek letter chi. And with that, it comes in with a value. And as we're dealing with mod 16, today the values would be 1 to 16. So we'll just call that chi of n. Now, this function here, chi, has got some uh, properties that are important when we're trying to build up our table of Dirichlet characters. Now, the function itself is completely multiplicative. So, chi of, for example, n, and let's say another integer, k. So if you've got a compound number inside your chi value, that would be the same as chi of n times chi of k. So you can split it apart by that. So that's really helpful when we're trying to build up our table. And another property we got is that chi of n plus m, where n is our value that we're trying to distinguish, and m is the value of our mod modulus. So in this case, it would be 16. So that would still be equal to chi of n. Because basically this function is completely periodic, modulus 16, as you would expect. Okay, and then one other property we're gonna need is chi of n to the power of some uh, indice. Let's call that t. That's the same as chi n to the power of t. So that's three properties there that are really helpful with building our table. Now the next thing we need to know is, what about the values of chi of n? Well, to start with, first place to start is it's a bit of a piecewise function. So chi of n takes on two kind of choices here. So it equals zero if the greatest common divisor of n and r modulus is greater than one, i.e. these two numbers will not be co-prime. And it's not equal to zero, so it could be positive or negative, and it could also be a um, complex number if n and m equals one. I, I, it is, it is actually a um, co-prime. These two numbers are co-prime. Okay, so chi of n, so we just mentioned complex numbers there. So this chi function, what it does, it maps integers onto complex numbers. So that's basically the basics of what this function does. Okay, so table of Dresha counts mod 16. So we have to set up now a group. So the numbers in this group will be one to 16. So let's call this group S. So S equals just basically the integers. Okay, integers, and they are in, so that's in. So it's basically from one to 16. So one, two, three, da 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 da, da 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 da, all the way up to 16. And that's our set S. Now we could distinguish a few uh, parts of these values of the group S by using this function here. So let's find the co-prime integers that are not co-prime with N and M. So M here is 16, so that's our modulus. So we just note that down here. So S, let's just look at our group S. So S equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Okay. So now we need to split them up into two kind of subgroups. So the group we're interested in to start with is going to be this one where they're co-prime. So I'll assign that one G and give it a subscript modulus 16, multiplication modulus 16. So I'm going to call it that group. So all the numbers in here that are co-prime will be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and 15. That's all our co-prime integers. 
And then basically the ones that are left, which will be all our even numbers, these are the ones that aren't co-primed to 16. So basically will be designated zero. So all of those numbers, we can already say, say straight away that their value is going to be zero. And this value here is not going to be zero. That's as far as we can get so far. So this group here, where we've got all the even numbers, so I'm going to assign them S and E. I'm just going to call that for the even numbers. That's the easiest way of going around this. That's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. So now we can say that the numbers chi for the values in this group, so all the members of this group, I'm going to call them lowercase s with a subscript e. These are all going to be equal in zero. So now we've split our table down now into eight numbers already. Okay, so now what do we do with these numbers? Well, now we're into group theory territory. So as we're into modulus 16, what we're interested in because of this value is finding the generator of this group here, modulus 16. So let's go about that first. So let's start with the number one. So we take this group off here for now. We know what that group is. And the values of those are all zero. So let's go about finding a generator. So to find a generator, what we have to do, we have to keep raising this, each uh, element of this set to a integer. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to eight. And hopefully it will generate every number in this group. So one, generate that to the power of one equals one. Okay, so now I need to know my order of each element. So I'm gonna set up a little table here. So N equals one, three, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, and 15. So when assigning values for each of these chi's, this is gonna be really important. So then I'm gonna put here for my order, so subscript O, I'm gonna call that one, because that's order one. What about three? So three, I've got three to the power of one, which gives me three. Three squared, which gives me nine. And then three cubed, which gives me 27, which is modulus 16 is congruent with the 11. So that's generated three, nine and 11 so far. And then three to the power of four, that equals 81, which is congruent with one. Okay, so we're back to one. So when you get back to one, you know that's the end of this. So this three is of order four. So what about five? So five to the power one is five. Five squared is 25. Mod 16, that's congruent with nine. Five cubed is 125. So that's 125. So mod 16, that's gonna be 13. And five to the power of four, that's going to be 625, which mod 16, that's just going to leave me back with one. So five to the power of four equals six to five, which is congruent with one. So this five is of order four as well. So that takes care of that one, seven. So this is quite time consuming, but it's going to help you in the long run to get your table sorted. So we can go through that almost a lot quicker than without knowing this. So seven, so seven is seven to the power of one. So that's seven. Seven squared is 49. Well, 49, we're back to congruent with one. So seven is of order two. Okay, nine. So nine, so we've got nine to the power of one, which is nine. <coughs> then we got, mm, <coughs> Nine squared, which is 81, which is now congruent with one. So then the order of nine is only two. Okay, now we've got 11, 13 and 15 to go. So I'm gonna put those here. 
So 11 equals 11 to the, then we've got 11 squared, which is 121, which is congruent with nine. So it takes care of that. And then instead of trying to find 11 cubed, which could be quite messy, I'm just going to multiply this one by 11. That will give me the next one in the series. So 9 11 is a 99. So that's going to be congruent with three. So that takes care of that. And then three times 11 is 33. So that's congruent with one. So again, 11 is of order four. Okay, let's have a look at 13. So 13 to the power of one, 13. 13 squared is 169. 169 mod 16 is congruent with nine. So we times nine by 13, we get 117. So 117 mod 16, that's gonna give me congruent with five. So nine times 13 equals 117, which is congruent with five, so that's good. Five times 13 is 65. So now we're back to congruent with one. So 13 is of order four. And now what about 15? 15, 15 to the power of one. Then we've got 15 squared, which is 225, which is gonna be congruent with one. So 15 is of order two. So that's the order of all the elements in my group. So nothing there is of order eight. So we've got a slight problem. So what I'm gonna to have to do is combine two elements of the group to generate the whole group. So if I took three and seven or five and seven or five and nine, I could take 11 and 15 if I liked, but I'm gonna choose three and seven as they're the smallest numbers, could be easier arithmetic. So generating the group, what I can do now, what I can do is G subset, uh, G subscript uh, modulus 16. I can change all these values now. So it would be equal. Let's take this off the board. These will be equivalent to now, if I choose this three and keep raising it to the power of one and then Rouse to the power of two, raise to the power of three, raise to the power of four. Obviously I'm going to need to take the modulus of all these. And then the next time I do it, I multiply them all by seven, all these same elements. So seven times three to the one, seven times three to the two, seven times three to the three, seven times three to the four. And that would generate all the elements in this group. So I'm going to let you guys work that out and just check that. Put any comments down below if you didn't agree. But therefore my two elements I can use to generate the group, I'm gonna use three and seven. So I'm gonna use three and seven. Okay, right, let's take this off the board and then let's work out how we can start generating the values of the group. Okay, so I've set up my table now ready. I've got all my numbers here which are co-prime. And then I've got down here all my possible solutions. So here I've noted chi1 of n, this is how I've written it. You might see it in other texts where they write chi 16, 1 of n, where 16 would denote, denote the modulus number. But as I've noted here, the group with multiplication modulus 16, I'm just going to leave them as single digits. Okay, now let's go about filling in our numbers. So uh, the value of 3, so that's going to be down this column, as order four. So this is gonna take on four different values in this box. So we've got plus or minus one, or plus or minus i. Now seven can only take on two values, so that's only gonna be plus or minus one. So as we're gonna use three and seven, and use this property here and all these properties, what we could do is we can set up our table with these numbers in automatically. So for three, we'll go one, minus one, and then i, minus i, and then we go one, minus one, i, minus i. And then for my seven, I'm gonna list them up one, 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 and then minus one, minus one, minus one. Now using the property over here, if I go chi of three and chi of seven, which is what we're interested in here, that will equal chi of, 21. 
And then using this property here, because it's periodic, modulus 16, that will equal chi of 5. So if I multiply these two numbers here, it should give me this column. So let's do that. So 1 minus 1, i minus i minus 1 plus 1 minus i and plus i. So that's my table there for number 5. And now what I can do is I can start using this new one I've found. Now I can multiply with 3 and with 7. So let's try chi of 5 with chi of 3. That's going to give me chi of 15. So with that property here, I can now do this column. So using 5 and 3. So 1 times 1 is 1. Minus 1 and minus 1 is 1. i times i, that's i squared, which is minus 1. Minus i times minus i. So that's going to give me minus 1 in there. Give me minus 1. 1 times minus 1, minus 1. Same again. Here, i times minus i, that's going to give me positive 1. And minus i times i, that's also going to give me positive 1. So that completes my 15. So still trying to use this 5. So we now do chi of 5 with chi of 15. So that's my new one. So chi of 15, that's going to give me, multiply together, that will give me chi of 75. So that will also then give me mod 16, chi of 11. So if I multiply 5 and 15, that will give me this column. So 11 is order 4, so I should get some complex numbers in here as well. So let's do 5 with 15. So 5, 1 times 1 is 1. Minus 1 times minus 1, what, plus 1 is minus 1. Minus 1 times i is minus i. Minus i times minus 1 give me positive i. Same here, I get positive 1. Minus 1, minus i, and here positive i. So that takes care of chi of 11. Now what about 3 and 15? So let's do chi of 3 with chi of 15, which is chi of 45. Mod 16, that's chi of 13. So that give me this one when I do 3 with 15. So let's do that. So go down here with this one, and that give me this column. So again, I should get some uh, complex numbers again as well as it's order 4. So 1 times 1 is 1, minus 1, minus i, positive i, minus 1, positive 1, i, and minus i. Okay, so now what we got? So now we could do, to get 1, we could do 11 with 3. So let's try that. So chi of 3 with chi of 11, that equals chi of 33. So mod 16, that's going to give me chi of 1. So 3 and 11. So this one and this one. So 1 times 1, minus 1. So i squared is minus 1 with a minus. Gives me positive 1. So basically here we should get all 1s. So it's of order 1. So that can be filled in straight down there. So if you can check that. And then for 9, we could do one other property, which is chi of n to the power of t. So chi of 5 squared equals chi of 5 squared, which also equals chi of 25, which equals chi of 9. So let's do that for 9. So taking number 5. So 1 squared is 1. So bearing in mind we should have order 2. So we should only have real numbers in here. Minus 1 squared, that also gives us 1. i squared is minus 1. Minus i squared, now that's going to give me a negative 1. Minus 1 squared is 1. 1 squared is 1. Minus i squared is negative 1. And i squared is negative 1. So that gives me all the values of my table completed.
Okay, so using all that information here, that's my Dirichlet characters table, modulus 16, with the zeros taken out. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to show you some properties of what the values in this table are actually going to mean. So that's going to be the next video. Okay.